hello everyone uh, welcome to lecture session 8 on uh, convective heat transfer in the previous uh, session uh, we had stopped um, at a point where uh, we had discussed all the uh, mathematical aspects related to internal flow force convective heat transfer today let us solve some numerical examples related to internal flow and uh, in the next session we can proceed to natural convection heat transfer before uh, we start starting uh, solving uh, problems i want to uh, discuss a few things about turbulent flow actually we did this in the uh, at the last of the previous session but still uh, let us put these points in place so that problem solving becomes easy for us so transition to turbulent flow will happen at a critical Reynolds number of 2300. So this is to be noted down properly. Uh, in external flow, for flow over a flat plate, we noted that the critical Reynolds number was uh, 5 into 10 raised to 5. And for flow over cylinders, we had considered uh, 2 into 10 raised to 5. But for internal flow situations, we will take it up as 2300. But there are some texts wherein you will find that uh, the critical Reynolds number is considered as 2000 and also in some books it is 2500. Please note that this does not uh, bring in a lot of difference in your numerical uh, results that you get. But still uh, for this uh, particular course I will be considering the critical Reynolds number as 2300. This is uh, the majority uh, of textbooks will consider Reynolds number as 2300 so we will do the same when the flow becomes turbulent uh, you know that there are no analytical uh, solutions which are possible so there are a lot of empirical correlations uh, which are available in literature and one of the most popular uh, relations among those is the ditus bolter equation so which is used uh, in many engineering applications where the flow is uh, turbulent in nature. Please note that majority of practical engineering applications will involve turbulent flow only. Laminar flow situations are pretty rare. Okay. Nusselt number is given by 0 0.023, Reynolds number raised to 0 0.8 and Prandtl number raised to the power n where n is 0.4 for heating of fluids and 0.3 for cooling of fluids. The second case happens when the fluid is hot and the surface is colder. So you have to take the appropriate power of Prandtl number depending on the situation. All the empirical correlations you will observe that they are valid in a given range of uh, parameters. For this particular correlation it is valid when Prandtl number is less than 100 and it is greater than 0.6. So most of our engineering fluids will come in this uh, range only. Reynolds number greater than 2500 and less than 1.25 into 10 raised to 6. Okay. And L by D ratio that is the length to diameter ratio to be greater than 60. So this is the uh, condition for using the Ditus Bolter equation. Now if you recall in external flow problems you had calculated or you had noted down the properties of the fluid at the film temperature which was given by the surface temperature plus free stream temperature by 2. In internal flow situations you have to replace this with the mean temperature which is given by Tm0 so that is mean temperature at outlet plus mean temperature at inlet divided by 2. So in most of the problems so you will have these two temperatures already given in the problem you have to just calculate the mean temperature and then note down the properties of fluid at this temperature. So this is also uh, a difference that you can make out between the external flow problems and the internal flow problems. Okay. So now let us start uh, solving a few numerical examples. Let us take the first problem. I will read out the problem. Water is heated in an evaporator from a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius. The 
tube wall is maintained at a constant temperature of 350 degree Celsius. If water flows at 1.5 meter per second and tube diameter is 50 millimeter, determine the length of the tube. So this is the problem. So what you are trying to calculate here, so the goal is to heat water from 30 to 150 degree Celsius. You are doing this using uh, a tube which is maintained at a constant wall temperature of 350. Now if the water is flowing at 1.5 meter per second, you should find out what should be the length of the tube to achieve this uh, rise in temperature of water. Okay, so this is the problem. Let us uh, solve it. Let me take the whiteboard. Okay, so first it is always beneficial to represent the problem uh, pictorially. So please remember uh, writing the problem in a sketch will be uh, very useful to you when you start solving the uh, problem. Okay, so let me write the problem domain. So it is given that it is a tube. Okay, so the inlet, let me take the axis. Inlet temperature is given, this is the flow direction. So here he has mentioned that T mean at inlet. So this is 30 degree uh, Celsius. This is T mean temperature at outlet. Even though he, he does not mention that it is a mean temperature, it's obviously understood. So if he says that the inlet temperature is 30 degree Celsius, obviously wherever you measure the inlet temperature at the inlet cross section, you will have the temperature as 30 degree only. So it is the mean temperature at inlet. So temperature at outlet is uh, 150 degree Celsius. So this is what is given to you. And he says that the wall is maintained at a constant temperature of 350 degree Celsius. He has given you the physical dimension of the tube. So the diameter of the tube is 0 0.05 meter, 5 centimeter. Okay. Uh, velocity 1.5 meter per second. Okay, let us take the velocity as V, no need of taking U infinity because it's not, uh, okay, velocity V is 1.5 meter per second. So he wants you to calculate the length of the tube to achieve this uh, rise in temperature of water, the fluid is water. Okay, so uh, if you recall the steps that we had used in the external flow problem. So first step, step one was to find uh, properties of the fluid, properties of fluid. What was step two? To calculate Reynolds number. Step three, to get the Nusselt number. And step four was all the unknowns that you wanted to calculate. Okay, so keeping this in mind, the solution methodology is not very different. So we can use the same set of uh, steps to solve the problem. Okay. So first let me consider uh, step one. Uh, to find properties for water, properties at, what is the temperature now? It is the mean temperature at Tm, so which is given by Mi plus the M0 divided by 2. So for this case it is 90 degree Celsius. Now use your handbook, so it is available in page number uh, 22. So if you go to page number 22, so you will find the properties of water. Note down the values at 90 degree Celsius. So values are 965.3 kg per meter cube, okay, viscosity 0.315 into 10 raised to minus 3 kg meter per second or Newton second per meter square, 
CP value is required for internal flow problems most of the times. So make a uh, habit of noting it also. It is 4206 joule per kg Kelvin. Thermal conductivity is 0.675 watt per meter Kelvin. Prandtl number is 1.96. So these values you can easily note down from your data handbook. Now, what is the next step? Step 2. To calculate Reynolds number. Reynolds number RE. What is the characteristic dimension here for internal flow? It is always the diameter. If the cross section is not circular, we have, we have already discussed this. So you have to use the hydraulic diameter. So let us take one problem later with that uh, thing in mind. Okay. So this is given by rho v d by mu. So all the property values are noted. Velocity is given. Diameter is also given. Calculate Reynolds number. So if you do, so you'll get 2.298 into 10 raised to 5. What will you do with this uh, Reynolds number value? You have to state whether the flow is turbulent or laminar. So since it is greater than the critical Reynolds number, which was 2300, so you should comment that it is turbulent, turbulent flow. It is a turbulent flow situation that you are having. Okay. So once you decide that it is turbulent flow, Select an appropriate correlation to calculate Nusselt number. Step 3. Step 3. Calculation of Nusselt number. What equation will we use? So let us use the uh, Ditter's Bolter equation only. Okay. So we have uh, this equation is available in page number 126 of your handbook. So this is 7th edition of the handbook that I am referring to. Random number raised to 0.4 for this case because the fluid is getting heated up. So substitute all our values. So Nusselt number will be 585.815. So this is the uh, Nusselt number value that you will be getting. Okay. So then after getting the Nusselt number, you can proceed to calculation of the unknowns. It is convenient to find the heat transfer coefficient and keep it aside. So you know Nusselt number is nothing but it is H into D by K. So therefore H is if you substitute the values 7.909 into 10 raised to 3 watt per meter squared. So this is the value of heat transfer coefficient which will be uh, useful later okay so what is the unknown in this problem it is the length so you are supposed to calculate length of the uh, tube required so let us uh, get on to that now how do you do that okay let me erase this Reynolds number also yes now to calculate this length so you can use the heat transfer expression. So let us note initially that this is a constant wall temperature problem. So given constant wall temperature boundary condition. So this is the given boundary condition which is a constant wall uh, uh, temperature boundary condition okay so now uh, we know that q equals h into surface area into log mean temperature difference this we have done uh, in the previous uh, discussion in the previous session we had discussed for a constant wall temperature boundary condition what will happen 
uh, to the temperature difference. We saw that it assumes a logarithmic uh, variation and uh, which is uh, given by something called as log mean temperature difference LMTD. This we have done in the last session itself. But by overall energy balance, Q is also equal to M dot Cp into T mean temperature at outlet minus T mean temperature at inlet. Okay, so this is by overall energy balance. Whatever uh, heat you are adding to the fluid should raise its uh, energy. So what is the uh, rise in energy of the fluid? It is nothing but MCP delta T. Okay, so these two equations we already have. So in this, let us calculate uh, the LMTD mass flow rate and surface area for this problem. Okay, so mass flow rate M dot is nothing but rho A B by continuity equation. Rho is already noted. Area is pi d squared by 4. Cross sectional area you should take whenever you calculate the mass flow rate. Velocity is also given. You calculate this value. Okay. What will be the unit? It is flow rate. So, kg per second. Next, to calculate the surface area, since it is a cylindrical cross section, so it should be pi dl. So, L is unknown, pi d into L. So, let us keep it as it is. Don't change the L value. Then, LMTD. How to calculate this LMTD? The formula for LMTD, if you remember, is delta t at x equals 0 minus delta t at x equals L. divided by log of delta t at x equals 0 by delta t at x equals L. This was the formula that we uh, derived in, that, uh, in the previous session. So what is delta t? Delta t is nothing but the wall temperature minus the mean temperature. Okay. So now if I draw this if I represent this problem so if this is x and this is x equals L this is x equals 0 and this axis represents temperature what is this this is my wall temperature so how the temperature actually changes so it changes somewhat like this okay so this is T M I this is T M O, the temperature at this point and temperature at this point. Okay, both are given to us. So now how to find delta T at x equals 0? So it is nothing but T wall minus T M I. So how much is this? 350 minus 30. So it is 320. Delta T at x equals L is Tw minus Tm0, so which will be 200. So this is a temperature difference. Um, it doesn't matter uh, to write the unit because a difference in two temperatures is, uh, if you say it's degree C, Kelvin, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's why I have not written any unit. If you substitute, so your LMTD, let me erase this and write it at this side okay LMTD after you calculate uh, the numerical value so it should be 255.317 it is customary to write degree C but not required if you ask me because it is the difference in temperature okay so now you substitute uh, the LMTD, mass flow rate and surface area in this equation. So if you do that, L will be equal to 4.524 meter. This is the required length for your problem. This is the answer. 
So here it asked you to calculate the length required. So 4.524 is the uh, length. But don't stop at this point. Uh, you see the Ditter's equation was valid when L by D ratio was greater than 60. You can see that in your handbook also. It is mentioned. So it's good to calculate L by D ratio to check whether the equation that you used is a valid equation or not. Now consider L by D ratio. So if you do the calculation, it will be 90.48, so which is obviously greater than 60. So our consideration of the Ditter's equation to calculate uh, the Nusselt number and heat transfer coefficient is uh, valid. So like this, you have to conclude and end your solution. Is this clear? Yes. Now, let us take up one more numerical. Yeah. In a long annulus, so annulus is pipe within a pipe and the flow is happening on the outer surface of the inner tube and the inner surface of the outer tube. Air is heated by maintaining the temperature of the outer surface of inner tube at 50 degrees Celsius. Air enters at 16 degrees and leaves at 32 and it flows uh, at a velocity of 30 meter per second. Estimate the heat transfer coefficient between air and the inner tube. Also find the pressure drop. So he is asking you to estimate the pressure drop also. Okay, so let me take up this uh, solution of this problem. Let us do it quickly. She says that it is a long annulus. So let me draw an annulus. Okay. So this is the problem domain flow is happening here please note this is the annular space between the two uh, cylinders so let me call this uh, outer one as d naught so this is 5 centimeters di the inner one is 3.125 centimeter so these are the uh, diameters at inlet and outlet. Please give me a second. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, he has also given the temperatures at the inlet and outlet. What is the Mean temperature at inlet, I'll write it here. Mean temperature at inlet is 16 degree Celsius. And mean temperature at outlet is 32 degree Celsius. And velocity V is 30 meter per second. Okay. So what he wants to calculate, he wants you to calculate uh, heat transfer coefficient and pressure drop delta P. So these are the two things that you are asked to estimate. Okay. Uh, and he says that the pipe wall is maintained at a uh, of the inner tube that is. So this is maintained at a temperature of 50 degree Celsius. So again, this is a constant wall temperature kind of problem. Yes, to solve this, let us uh, proceed with the age old steps that we are using. Step one, properties of what is the fluid here? Air, air at mean temperature, which is TMI plus TMO by 2 divided by 2. So this will be 32 plus 16, 48, 24, 24 degree Celsius. 
go to page number 34 in your data book for properties of year 27th edition so i'll just write the values very quickly please excuse me i will not write the units so you can uh, you know the units you please write the units don't leave it as it is like uh, i am doing i am just trying to save some time 15.9 into 10 raised to minus 6 you don't have the value directly at 24 so you have to interpolate 0 0.0263 and parangle number is 0.7 okay so step one is done what is step two to find Reynolds number so in this case the given cross section is not circular it is the annular space so you have to calculate the hydraulic diameter first how do you calculate the hydraulic diameter if this is nothing but four times cross sectional area by perimeter by perimeter so you can use this formula to calculate it or you will directly get this uh, value also from your data handbook so if you go to page number um, 129 you will directly get the value for this uh, hydraulic diameter which is nothing but d naught minus di just the difference between the outer uh, uh, radi uh, diameter and inner diameter so this is 0 0.019 meter please convert all the units to meter even if you are given in centimeter and millimeter it's better to convert it into meter while solving the problem okay so reynolds number at hydraulic diameter you have to calculate so which is given by rho v hydraulic diameter divided by mu or v into d by mu if you have the kinematic viscosity so this value will be 3.538 into 10 raised to 4 what is your comment this is greater than 2300 so you can consider the flow as turbulent flow yes so this is step 2 done what is step 3 step 3 is to use the appropriate correlation for Nusselt number we will again select the data uh, equation only so because we are comfortable with that so Nusselt number is with respect to hydraulic diameter 0.023 re with respect to hydraulic diameter raised to 0.8 into Prandtl number raised to 0.4 again uh, air is getting heated up so n will be 0.4 only uh, so if you calculate this Nusselt number it will be 86.846 immediately you calculate the heat transfer coefficient also which is h into d hydraulic by k so which implies h value of 121.815 watt per meter squared kelvin so this is the value of heat transfer coefficient which will be uh, needing later okay so now you have the value of heat transfer coefficient uh, which is calculated uh, which is an unknown so we need not do any further calculation heat transfer uh, coefficient itself is the unknown in the problem so we have determined it but to find pressure drop what is to be done so this is very important because in the examination he might ask you to get the pressure drop also so how to find pressure drop let us see so what is the pressure drop associated with so you know that pressure drop is always associated with friction friction in the pipe so delta p is has something to do with friction so first you should find the friction factor so how to find friction factor f for turbulent flow you go to page number 125 of your data book so the friction factor is given by 
0.184 Reynolds number with respect to hydraulic diameter for minus 0.2. So I use this equation, calculate the value of the friction factor, which you will get it as 0 0.023. Alternately, alternatively, you can also do uh, calculate or find the value of friction factor using the Moody's chart. So Moody's chart is also available in the data book. So you please use the Moody's chart to find the value if you are comfortable with that. So it's a graph of Reynolds number versus the friction factor for different uh, cases, smooth pipes, rough pipes. You consider smooth pipe and try to get the value of friction factor. Okay, so this is one uh, thing. So first half of this is done. So how do you get pressure drop? Pressure drop delta P is F into L by D hydraulic diameter into rho V squared by what? kinetic energy, rho v squared by 2. So please remember the F that you have calculated here is the 4 times the coefficient of friction. So this is friction factor what you have obtained here not the coefficient of friction. So 4 FL v squared please you don't do. Okay. On substitution so you should get this as 877 0.4 Pascal. You try this out. Okay. So whenever he asks you to calculate the pressure drop, first is to find the friction factor and using friction factor you can easily get the pressure drop. This formula to calculate pressure drop is also available in the handbook. So if you see closely, so you will get this formula also. You need not remember uh, this formula also. So it is also available in the handbook. Okay, so this is how you have to solve this numerical. So whenever the cross section is not circular, so you have to calculate the hydraulic diameter and use the hydraulic diameter to get the uh, Nusselt number and heat transfer coefficient. Okay. Let us proceed to problem 3. Yeah. Water at 20 degrees Celsius flows through a 2.5 centimeter internal diameter 1 meter long pipe whose surface is maintained at a constant temperature of 50 degrees Celsius at a velocity of 5 centimeter per second. So uh, water is flowing at a velocity of 5 centimeter per second here. Determine the outlet temperature of water assuming fully developed hydrodynamic boundary layer. So this is the uh, problem. So let us try to solve this. Okay. Yeah. So the problem. So you have a pipe. The surface is maintained at a constant temperature of 50 degree Celsius and uh, one second let me go back to the problem okay velocity of flow is given 5 centimeter per second okay on the inlet side he has mentioned that the bulk temperature is 20 degree celsius he wants you to calculate what is the bulk temperature at outlet tm not he wants you to calculate he says uh, the length of the pipe l is 1 meter and he has also given you one more extra data by saying that the hydrodynamic layer is fully developed. So let us see what is the implication of that when we start solving the problem. So since in this problem you don't know what is the outlet temperature, so how do you calculate 
the mean temperature which is Tm at inlet plus Tm plus out, outlet by 2. So whenever you have a situation like this, at the start you should actually the procedure is a trial and error type of uh, approach. You will see uh, later what uh, we will be doing. Assume, assume Tm that is the mean temperature as Tmi. As TMI. So this is one valid approach. So to assume that the in, uh, inlet temperature itself is the mean temperature and later correct it. But since uh, we know that the wall is maintained at 30 degree, uh, 50 degree Celsius, obviously the temperature of water should increase as it passes through the tube. For the sake of, um, let us intuitively assume some value. So instead of taking at inlet only, as I know that it should increase, let me consider the temperature as some 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, so let me consider the mean temperature as 30, between 20 and 50 that is. Okay, now properties, properties of water, the fluid is water at Tm. Let me quickly note it again. Uh, excuse me, I will not write the unit because it consumes a lot of time. Please write it when you do it on paper. 8315 into 10 raised to minus 3. Sorry, 10 raised to minus 6. To 10 raised to minus 6. Uh, Prandtl number is obviously high, 5.68, k value is 0.6129, cp is 4178, okay. So these are the values that you can note down from your data book. Step 2 to find the Reynolds number, since this is a circular pipe, no need to calculate any hydraulic diameter. Reynolds number is rho V D by mu or V into D by mu. So if you do the calculation properly, so you will get 1503.307. So which is less than 2300. So your comment is it is laminar flow. So once you get uh, the flow as laminar flow, there are some additional steps that you need to perform. So in the problem, so he has given you that the flow is hydrodynamically developed. So don't worry about it. So for, for the sake of um, uh, the steps that are to be followed, let us calculate, uh, let us assume that the flow is not hydraulically developed and uh, solve the problem. So whenever it is given, you can safely neglect uh, this, this step. Okay. In step 3, before you proceed to Nusselt number calculation, so first thing is to calculate hydraulic or hydrodynamic, we have used this term, hydrodynamic entrance length, entrance length. What is this hydrodynamic entrance length? The if you take the flow and this is your hydraulic uh, hydrodynamic boundary layer velocity boundary layer so we are trying to get this length we are trying to get this length to see whether uh, when compared to the length of my pipe whether it is uh, lesser than this or greater than this if it is greater than this what is your conclusion so you can conclude that the flow is not uh, hydrodynamically developed so it is still in the developing region okay so hydro hydrodynamic entrance length is given as l entrance length of uh, entrance hydraulic okay so this is 0 0.04 reynolds number based on diameter into uh, reynolds number based on diameter into d l by d that is sorry to d 
So these formulae are available in page number 124 of the handbook. Okay, so this is 1.550, sorry. Five zero three meter. Even though this is now actually, uh, if you are very particular, you have to consider that the flow is not hydrodynamically developed because this is greater than L. But in the problem itself, he has given that it is hydrodynamically developed. So let us neglect this step for this problem. That is, if it was not given, then you should have considered that uh, this is uh, not developed hydrodynamically and solve this problem. Okay. So, since it is given hydrodynamically, uh, fully developed, so let us uh, neglect this step. So, I just wanted to highlight what is to be done in a general way. For this problem, this step was not required. I think you can understand what I am telling. Okay. Now, thermal entrance length is required. Thermal entrance length. So it is given by a formula which is uh, directly beneath uh, the formula that we have used now. You can find it in the handbook. Only thing is you have to multiply the Prandtl number. 0 0.04 Reynolds number Prandtl number into D. So if you do this, this will be since Prandtl number for liquids is greater than 1. So you will get 8.537 meter. So this is obviously greater than length of the tube. So your conclusion should be thermally developing flow. Developing flow. So this is very very uh, important. So this step, whenever you get a laminar flow situation, please remember to calculate the hydrodynamic and thermal entry length to check whether the flow is thermally developing or not okay so when this is the case to calculate the Nusselt number so there is a correlation which is given in the same page but it requires the calculation of a parameter so let me take up that parameter so now the flow is in the thermally developing region so please remember that so first you need to calculate this parameter L by D divided by R E into P R. This is 1 by grade number actually. So if you calculate this, you will get 0 0.004684. So which is less than the condition that is given. This is less than 0 0.01. So you can use the correlation corresponding to that which is 1.67 RED PR divided by L by D ratio whole raised to 0.333 1 by 3 that is so this is available on the same page page number 124 so you calculate this you will get 9.962 as in Nusselt number so H will be Nusselt number is HD by K 244.228 watt per meter square Kelvin. Okay, so this is step 3 calculation of Nusselt number and uh, the corresponding uh, value of heat transfer coefficient. Okay, please note these steps properly. Now let us proceed to the unknown. That is to find the outlet temperature. So how to do this? So again, this is a constant wall temperature type of problem. So constant wall temperature boundary condition. Okay. So we have Q equals the general energy conservation MCP into T M naught uh, M at outlet. TMI, TM at inlet. Okay. But what is this equal to? 
uh, for constant wall uh, uh, temperature condition we have written in the previous problem also h into surface area into lmtd into lmtd okay so in this uh, m dot you know how to calculate rho area into velocity okay so this will be rho pi by 4 d square into velocity and surface area is pi d into l so length is 1 so this will just become pi d then lmtd how do you estimate let us simplify this lmtd slightly so delta x at x equals 0 so last problem i have demonstrated it i'll write it directly tm minus tmi minus of tw minus tm at outlet divided by log of the same ratio tw minus tmi tw sorry tm at outlet so when you uh, substitute all the things properly and uh, then further simplify so you should get uh, something like this log of 30 okay divided by 50 minus t m at outlet so please do this simplification you can do it so this is 1.2062 so this is without the log sorry without the log term so this is what you will get so once you do the simplification so you will obtain this value this thing so which again implies tm at outlet to be 25 point one to eight degree Celsius now the question is will you stop the problem at this point so obviously if you if tm naught is 25.128 what is the value of tm so let us calculate that first and see what is the deviation that we get so we have assumed tm as 30 degree Celsius if you recall at the start of the problem so now tm after first iteration is 20 plus 25.12 divided by 2 so this is obviously not equal to 30 now whatever value you get you again repeat the calculation repeat the iteration what we have done repeat the calculation to find the new value of tm naught similarly what we have done until now and again check for tm after you find it check tm whether it is same as what you had assumed earlier or not if there is a very small deviation you stop the step so you have you are familiar with numerical methods that is what we are doing here is this okay so i think two iterations are sufficient because it will become extremely lengthy if you go on uh, doing it and uh, if you get one decimal accuracy it is sufficient for this problem okay please uh, work on this problem whenever there is uh, an unknown with the outlet temperature this is the procedure that you need to adopt is this clear okay let us take up one more numerical let me erase this entirely yeah problem number four air at one bar and 20 degrees celsius flows through a square duct of six millimeters height one meter long in length the surface is maintained at a constant heat flux with velocity of three meter per second so the surface is not moving with the velocity please 
the note that air is moving at the velocity 3 meter per second so the sentence is not framed properly here determine the heat transfer rate not hat sorry there is a typo it should be heat transfer rate determine the heat transfer coefficient if the exit bulk temperature of air so which is nothing but tm outlet is 80 degree celsius also determine the exit wall temperature so this is a very important problem from your examination point of view and value of heat transfer coefficient at exit so these two things you have to estimate let me take up this the solution of this problem quickly we will try to solve this now the geometry uh, of the cross section is a square so you have a square duct of 6 millimeter uh, sides okay air is flowing at a velocity of 3 meter per second okay the temperature at the inlet the bulk temperature is given 20 degree celsius fortunately the outlet is also given 80 uh, degree celsius and he says that it is a constant heat flux boundary condition now if you observe we are taking up both type of boundary condition constant wall temperature and constant heat flux constant heat flux type boundary condition uh, is what we are having length of the uh, duct is uh, 1 meter okay now how do you start the problem same steps that we have done multitudes of times now step 1 properties of air air properties at mean temperature it is t mean at inlet t mean at outlet by 2 estimate this so it will be 50 degree celsius so you will get all the values directly page number 34 from your data book so if you want the reference again hmm? so i will write the values directly density is 1.093 mu is 19.61 10 raised to minus 6 cp value for year 2005 prandtl number 0 0.696 8 0.698 and conductivity is 0 0.02826 watt per meter kelvin so these are the values that you can note from the handbook directly step 2 what is step 2 calculation of Reynolds number now since the cross section is not circular calculate the hydraulic diameter hydraulic diameter is given by 4 times area by perimeter uh, this is a square so 4 times a squared by 4 times a so this is a itself 6 millimeter so 0 0.006 meter this is the hydraulic diameter. Now calculate your Reynolds number based on hydraulic, uh, hydraulic diameter. So rho VD hydraulic by mu. So this will give you a value of 1003.263 which is obviously less than 2300. So flow will become laminar for this case. Laminar. Now what you will do check for uh, hydrodynamic and thermal entry length that we uh, described in the last uh, problem also so now step 3 before we can calculate necessary number so hydrodynamic so dynamic entry length or entrance length 
so n e hydrodynamic so this is 0 0.04 times d into reynolds number with respect to diameter in this case uh, since we have calculated hydraulic diameter i will use hydraulic diameter only so this will be 0 0.24 meter okay similarly what you will do thermal thermal entry length so le based on temperature uh, sorry thermal boundary layer 0 0.04 diameter re diameter hydraulic diameter into Prandtl number so this will be 0 0.168 meter now what is your conclusion you can see that both hydrodynamic entry length and uh, thermal entry length are less than the length of the pipe so you can safely assume that the flow is flow is fully developed so both thermally and hydrodynamically developed once you have this situation if you recall we will have the analytical solution so we did the analytical solution in the class okay so you just recall whenever you have uh, the condition of hydrodynamically fully developed and thermally fully developed so you will have the analytical solution and the Nusselt number is a constant okay now please be careful uh, you cannot write 4.36 as the constant value because this is a square cross section you have the list of values which are given in the data book so you have to refer to uh, page number 128 so you go to page number 128 there is a table which is provided there page 128 for a square cross section with constant heat flux boundary condition you will see that Nusselt number is 3.608 so but there is a condition so the L by hydraulic diameter ratio should be greater than 100 for this problem if you calculate L by hydraulic diameter so it will be 166.66 so which is greater than 100 so this is valid okay now get the heat transfer coefficient so this will be 16.993 watt per meter square kelvin okay heat transfer coefficient is done now let us proceed to getting all the unknowns uh, for this problem what are to be calculated here so you need to calculate what is the uh, exit wall temperature so that is what is required so first let us take up these unknowns so it's always beneficial for a constant heat flux uh, boundary condition so constant heat flux wall heat flux that is constant wall heat flux boundary condition it's always beneficial to get the value of the wall heat flux okay so let us calculate it first so how to do it q is again by overall energy balance mcp c m naught minus t m i but this is same as wall heat flux into surface area okay so let us substitute our values for this and see what is the wall heat flux we will get okay so now again mass flow rate i will just uh, substitute rho since we have modeled the cross section as a as an equivalent uh, circular one using the hydraulic diameter uh, definition so this will be how much pi dh squared by 4 uh, rho a v into cp into tm naught minus tm i both values are given divided by pi dh into l so this is the value of your wall heat flux substitute all the values so you will get this as uh, 
0.883 watt per meter square. But you know that the wall heat flux can be written if you take the uh, exit plane. So if you take this plane, if I know the temperature here as wall temperature at outlet, okay. And if I know the bulk fluid temperature, which is Tm0, so this wall heat flux, since it is a constant, should be constant at this point also, everywhere. In any cross section you take, it should be constant as per the uh, boundary condition. So therefore, you can write wall heat flux at outlet. So let me write it. This is same as QW because of the constant wall heat flux will be H into what the temperature difference outlet minus Tm at outlet. Please remember this step. This will give you the wall outlet temperature of let me check the numerical value for your comparison 97.47. So if you do the calculation properly, 97.47 degrees Celsius. This is how you will have to do the problem. Okay, this is the solution for this problem. Whenever he asks you to get the wall temperature at outlet, so please take care to uh, calculate if it is a constant heat flux problem, calculate the heat flux first. And since the heat flux is constant throughout the length of the pipe, uh, take the exit cross section and then calculate the wall temperature at outlet. So this is the solution for problem number 4. Now there is one more numerical that I have. Let us quickly go to that. He says atmospheric pressure air at 100 degrees Celsius enters a 0.04 dia 2 meter long tube with a velocity of 9 meter per second. A 1 kilowatt electric heater is wound on the outer surface of the tube and provides a uniform heat flux. This is also a uniform heat flux boundary condition problem, wall heat flux boundary condition. Find mass flow rate of air, exit temperature and the wall temperature of tube at outlet. Okay, so I will not solve this problem completely. I'll just give you some clues. I hope you can uh, do this. So here, he says pressure is atmospheric. So pressure is 101.32 kilopascal. Why we are taking this, I'll tell you. So you know the pressure at entry, but you don't know pressure at outlet. So if you don't know this, you cannot calculate the mean temperature. And for this problem, if you start assuming this value and solving, you will uh, not proceed. Uh, you will realize that you cannot proceed uh, with the solution of the problem. So how to do is calculate the density based on the inlet temperature itself. You can note down from the handbook also. So or you can use the ideal gas equation P by RT. Rho is P by RT, where T is 373 Kelvin. 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, calculate this density value. So you will get some value. Mass flow rate you will get directly then. It is nothing but rho A into V. Once you get the mass flow rate, you can calculate Q. How? Q is m dot Cp Tm naught at outlet Tmi at inlet. But Q is given in the problem as 1 kilowatt. Use this and assume a value for Cp, 1005 we can assume, okay, assume this as 1005, calculate Tm0, Tm at outlet, okay. After you obtain this outlet temperature, you can easily get the mean temperature which is Tm at inlet plus Tm at outlet P2. Use this to solve the problem further. Okay, calculate the properties, yeah, note down the properties, calculate Reynolds number. For this problem, it will turn out that the uh, Reynolds number uh, will be turbulent. So use the uh, Dieter's correlation to solve the problem. I hope you will 
uh, solve this problem i'll just give you the final uh, answer so if i can find it you try this problem in the next class in the next session at the start i'll just give you the answer for this problem okay with this we have come to the end of this uh, uh, session and also uh, we have concluded the discussion on internal flow force convective heat transfer in the next session let us take up natural convective heat transfer and see the physics that is involved in natural convection thank you let us meet in the next session